So this wasn't even the original plan for this week's video and I wasn't even going to make a video on this topic, but yet here we are. What is going on USC card lovers? Welcome back here to another episode of USC Card Talk. My name is Damien and if you are new to this UFC card channel here at UFC Card Talk, we like to talk about everything to do with UFC cards, from collecting to investing and also recent UFC card hobby news. This week's episode, it's going to be a little bit of a different one for you guys and it's going to concentrate more on that formal word that I just used, investing in UFC cards. This week, this was not the original plan for this video. I was meant to be making a more exciting, a more positive video about my results from crossing over SGC 9.5s to PSA 10s. But upon doing some research for that video, I stumbled across just the overall market that we are in now with the UFC cards. I've spoken about before, about maybe reasons why that we are in such a low market and why that it is consistently we're on a downward spiral when it comes to UFC card sp pricing. But this week's topic, I want to put it out to you guys as the UFC card community. I want to hear about what you guys think. I'm going to give my opinion, my own opinion on this video today, but I also want to hear from you guys. So whether you want to write down in the comments what you guys think, or if you want to direct message me on Instagram at UFC Card Talk, feel free to do either. But I do really want to hear from you guys on this topic. If you are new to this UFC Card channel, I can suggest that you guys hit that subscribe button because I do do weekly UFC card related videos and if you would do enjoy this video by the end please do me a favor do the YouTube algorithm a favor and hit that like button and if you do enjoy this video if you do like UFC cards then you could probably hit the notification bell as well so you do not miss out on my weekly videos. Alright so let's get into the depth of it. As I said I I've had some good success crossing over some SGC 9.5s to PSA 10s. This got me really excited to make a, a, a video about this to share my results with you guys. And then also I wanted, I started doing some research. I wanted to do some in-depth looking at, okay, what were some specific examples of SGC 9.5s we could buy now at a certain price to then what could we potentially make if it became a PSA 10? and obviously work out if that difference minus the grading would allow for an extra profit. I speak about investing, I know it's a bit of a dirty word. It's fucking illegal. Especially in the UFC car community, I understand that a good majority of people who are buying UFC cards are straight collectors and obviously there's nothing wrong with that, but I do know also there are people who are like myself who are a little bit of a hybrid of the both. We have cards that we collect like obviously I collect Sean O'Malley, I collect, I collect Matt Holloway, I collect Yoshihiro Akiyama but I'm at the point now in my own hobby journey where I don't really want to put any more extra money from my from my day-to-day -day life. I don't want to put any extra money from that into these UFC cards. I would like a situation where I could start off with a set amount of money and buy some cards and then use the profits from those cards to pay for my PC cards. Now, as I said, I know I'm not the only one who likes to do this, so I do think that it's fun and it's also interesting to make videos about that sort of stuff. And obviously that was why I was wanting to do this SGC 9.5 to PSA 10 video because that is an avenue where it is potential, or at least I thought it was an avenue for people like myself who want to make some extra money on the side to pay for their PC cards who do so. But it doesn't work out like that. I've mentioned this before on previous videos and I know a lot of other people are sort of highlighting at the moment, but the market is really quite down at the moment. I'm gonna give some reasons, some of my own opinion why I think so. There's about four or five. I'm not gonna dive too deeply into them because that's gonna take up way too much of your guys' time, but I do wanna just highlight some reasons why and then we'll move forward in from there as to well, what can I do from here on out? Obviously, I can't speak for everyone, so you guys are obviously gonna be at a point where you guys are gonna have to make up your own mind about what you wanna do moving forward if you are watching this video, but hopefully there's something here and there you can take from this video. So, to state the obvious, obviously, for the first reason of why I think the card market, especially the UFC card market, is low at the moment is the overall economic conditions of the world. 
people just have less money to put towards these extras in their life. They are paying more for everyday day-to-day -day necessities so they have less money to put towards cards. That one is pretty straightforward. The other reason I do believe is people are uncertain at the moment. People, maybe they do have a little bit of extra money. I'm lucky enough, as I've mentioned this before, and I am grateful for that, and that's why I keep putting it out there because everyone's situation is different. I do still have a good solid job where I do have the ability to put extra money towards cards if I want to. But even I at the moment, I'm still uncertain about what to do. I've been buying lots of cards, but still I can't help ignore the obvious about the pricing that we are seeing at the moment and what that means moving forward. So as I said, people are that they're uncertain and that is also adding to the problem. The other reason I do believe is, and I think this is a big part of it, is just the overall supply the oversupply i should say that we have seen from ufc cards since panini basically did the licensing this is a big reason in my opinion because supply and demand controls markets in general so at the moment we've seen so many releases from panini we've seen so many sets within those releases we've seen so many parallels within those releases from Panini that is basically flooding the market at the moment with an oversupply as opposed to what the demand is. So this is a basically a reoccurring problem and it's giving people the opportunity to have too many options. And when the buyer has the option, obviously the selling, the people selling, they are basically at the mercy of the people buying. So that is why it is a buyer's market at the moment more so than a selling market. And that's why we are seeing lower pricing. Adding to the uncertainty that I mentioned before is the overall drama of Panini versus Fanatics at the moment and the licensing issue. We have just seen WWE drop the Panini license early. For those of you who do not know, the WWE and UFC, the largest stakeholdings in both of those companies are owned by the same company, Endeavor. So basically it is, in summary, UFC and WWE are owned by the same company. So therefore, if we've seen Panini lose their license for WWE earlier, we've also seen the NFL lose the license recently. So it is a good indication and Obviously nothing certain yet because it hasn't happened, but all signs at the moment are pointing towards Panini losing the license for UFC, whether that's this year and we start seeing Fanatics through Tops making products next year, which would get a lot of people excited again. But at the moment it is just so uncertain with all the drama between those two card manufacturing companies. Nobody knows what's happening and people are sitting on the fence at the moment. Now another potential reason, I have mentioned this before, is a good portion of people in the UFC, in the card hobby, not just UFC cards, but in the card hobby in general, they are dealers, they are sellers. This is their full-time job. They are buying, selling sports cards to pay their day-to-day -day bills, which is something that even I forget as a just a hobbyist, somebody who has an outside job who uses my extra income to buy these cards, you sort of forget that there are a good portion of people who are doing this full time. So it is very, very important for them that they are making sales, whether they are sales that are a profit or whether they're cutting at a, at a break even or even if they're selling at a loss. There are people who just need to sell their inventory. Also, these may be the same people who got into UFC cards only over the last few years because there was that niche period where a lot of dealers were going outside of the big three sports. They were getting away. Not only were they selling basketball, football and baseball, but they were looking at these niche sports like Formula One, soccer, even hockey, UFC. You name the sport, they were diving into these sports looking for opportunities for the next big boom. And obviously we did see that boom period for UFC cards in 2021, 2022. And we are seeing not only a correction of that at the moment, but also these dealers, these people who need to make sales. If you were them and you had these more niche sports in your inventory, you were obviously at least in my opinion, you only want to be selling those UFC cards before you sell the more popular NBA cards. So as I said, they could be selling these cards at not only a break even, but they are probably selling these cards at auction. They are taking losses 
just in order to turn over more money in order to put it somewhere else. And then this is my last one I wanna to go to. This one is definitely a little bit outside the box, but definitely in could be a factor. And I think, as I said, those dealers, those people in the sports card hobby who maybe jumped into UFC because it was a niche sport, because it was an area they thought they could make money originally, they have hopped off the UFC train now and they have jumped over to Lorcana. If you're not heard of Lorcana, it is the new trading card game from Disney. Obviously, no real surprise, Disney is one of the biggest IPs in the world and they have started this year a trading card game which is trying to, to rival the trading card games such as Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh! And being that this is the first ever year releases, people are buying boxes, gonna be holding onto boxes in hoping to sell them for a profit, whether it's now or in the future. But there is a lot of hype, there is a lot of speculation revolving around this new trading card game, Laura Kana, just now. So it does make sense if there are people, as I said, who are just jumping in and out of niche markets. They have left UFC, they are selling their UFC card products just so they could get into the new hot thing that is the Law Kana. And if you're listening to me just now and you're thinking, Damien, this is all just jibber jabber. Yes, this is only my own opinion, but as I said, you're, it sounds like I'm speaking very negatively about the UFC card market at the moment. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to give people just the overall picture about what's going on. We can jump over now, quickly check out the UFC card index on Card Letter. So as we check out the index at the moment, it is down 21% over the last three months. We had this massive dip here in back in July the 15th. Now what I do wanna highlight here, this is just an overall index for the card market. So what Card Letter does is it takes sales from all the big major auction platforms, from all the big sports card selling platforms it logs every sale and then it obviously averages out the sales for each card individually comparing against previous sales. So just because we've seen this massive drop here over one day, that could be just explained by maybe one or two cards selling for much less than what their original value was. So because we don't have a lot of super high end expensive cards in UFC market, this massive drop over a 24 hour period can literally be explained by just one or two cards. Maybe someone bought a Conor McGregor card back in the hype in 2021, maybe early 2022. For whatever reason now, they need to sell that card. So they've sold that card and maybe they've sold it at a 30%, 40%, 50% loss, which is obviously, as, as I said, being a large sum, being a large market cap for just that one card, it has dragged down the overall index since then, over the last three months, as I said, we are on a downward trend. Nothing too sharp since then, but an overall downward trend leveling out here over the last few weeks. But if we do check out further than that, we can check out the last six months, 34%. So we had some massive drops here as well back in June, and then that massive one back down here in July. We will check out over the last year, even again, we have seen these massive drop off a cliff sales back from September 2022, all the way through Christmas time through to June, June 2023, should I say. Now we'll go to July from back from two years. So as I said, this is a very worrying graph, but what you guys do need to consider is we are back here in 2021 now, and what you do need to consider is that Back in 2021, when the overall sports card hype was at its absolute at at its peak, these card pricings were super inflated, and they were selling for much more than the, the original worth is. So just because we've had 67% minus drop over the last two years, that does not mean that your cards are worth 70% less than what they originally were. Just because, so you might might have bought somewhere here in this middle point in 2022. So you would be probably about at the halfway point, you would be down 30%. But what I do wanna highlight is if you were buying up here, you were buying at super inflated values which are more than what the card was probably worth in, to begin with. So unfortunately, every card across every market in the sports card market has seen these drastic drops just because it is basically a, a correction now from the overpricing that we saw back in 2021 and 2022. 
So this leads us now to the point of what do we do moving forward or what I cannot answer that for you guys as I said as somebody who is just making content I'm trying to give you both sides of the coin I normally am trying to be as positive as possible with my content and that's why I really struggled internally whether to bring this video or not to you guys but as I said I do believe it's important to show both sides and to not only just be seen as someone who is completely just bringing positivity all the time, although that is important, it's also necessary, I believe, to bring both sides of the story. So moving here from forward, as somebody who, as I said, I'm a hybrid of the two, and I have had criticism before, which I've, I shouldn't feel like I need to defend myself, but you know, I'm making a video on this topic as it is, People who say that you are either a collector or you're either an investor, you're either a, a flipper, if we want to use the dirtiest word in, in the hobby, flipping. What the fuck is that? But listen, I have, as I said, I've got cards in my PC that if I was somebody who was only investing, if I was someone who was only flipping, um, I would have sold those cards. For example, my O'Malley cards. I've got O'Malley cards that I 3, 4 x when he won the title. I could have sold those cards, made some money, but for those cards that, certain cards in my PC, I would much rather have the card than have the money. So that's why I didn't do things like that because some of these cards, if I sell them, like it's gonna be super hard to get them back. I, I would rather just have the card to be completely honest. But at the same time, I do not wanna put any of my extra discretionary income towards buying cards and I think it could be fun and that's why I think I'm not the only one who does this. It's fun to try and find ways in order to make money, whether it's buying new product and maybe pulling some cool cards getting them graded um, and to cover your cost of the box that you just paid for plus some extra and then you can do that over and over again making extra money or as i said maybe you're buying raw to grade which is super super tough that that is a completely a whole nother video that can be made in the future but these other ways that i've been trying to experiment just over my own time over the last four months in the hobby in order to try and make some extra money so I can just self-fund my PC cards. And that was what sparked this video because I was really shocked to see PSA 10s in the UFC market, you are lucky if you can get double the raw value, which is completely crazy. If you look at the other sporting card markets, PSA 10s can normally, they have a premium of about 4X from what a raw card is. Your PSA 9s for UFC are basically selling the same, of, of a raw card which is kind of crazy if you think about how hard it can be especially for some of these older UFC cards to get a PSA 9 so the fact that there's such a small margin of a profit that you can make by the time you pay for grading by the time you pay for shipping by the time you pay sales tax and fees it is literally it's it's very very difficult to try and make this extra money so that's where as I said for me it's challenging but it's also fun especially for me living as an international collector, not having the access to, to stuff, paying for extra postage, paying for extra fees. It's very, very difficult, but it's something that I'm still trying to figure out. And obviously I'm gonna bring more content like this to you guys, just for the, the people who are interested in that sort of stuff, we can sort of learn from each other. And as I said, that's where I want to put it out to you guys in the, in the community. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you are out there and you are like me, if you are trying to fund your PC cards, through UFC cards, through other sports, you can let me know down in the comments below or you can direct message me on my Instagram at UFC Card Talk. Very, very interested to see what you guys' thoughts are on this topic as a general, what you guys are doing, what, what your own plans are. Obviously, if you are doing something like this, it's important to have strategies. It's important to try different things, see what works. I still will be making a video in the future about my SGC 9.5s to PSA 10s, but as I said, I want to have a more in-depth video. Um, so that's why I've changed the topic. I end up changing the topic for this week. Where do we go from here? What do we do moving forward? I mentioned that is everyone's personal journey within the hobby. I can only answer that for myself. What I will be doing moving forward is because I'm not making any extra money within the card hobby at the moment, I'm probably just gonna take a step back. I'm gonna save the same amount of budget that I have for my day job and I'm gonna just wait. I'm gonna sit and wait because it is very much still a buyer's market at the moment and I do, at least in my own eyes, I see this as a long-term thing. 
So if you're playing the short term game, as I said, would love to hear from you guys. But for me, being in it for the long run, it's easier for me just to sit back and watch a little bit, maybe pick up some cards here and there that I think are very well priced and maybe I won't get too many shots at in the future because I do believe that this is always gonna turn around. Whether it takes a year, whether it takes two years, whether it takes five years, I don't know, but it will turn around. And for me, as I said, I, I, I'm in this for the long run. I'm in this for, for the rest of my days. So I've got all the time in the world, which makes it easy for me, as I said, just to sit back, check out the auctions, check out the selling platforms, see if there's some cards that really spark my interest for the PC, probably take a step away from trying to make money within the card hobby at the moment and just concentrate on buying some cool PC cards at record low prices. But for those of you guys who are just straight collectors, you tell me what you guys are doing. You guys may be happier than ever because especially if you came in over the last two years like myself, we are seeing, as I said, over to show the index, we are seeing lowest prices ever right now. So maybe you guys who are straight collecting, who are not wanting to sell fun, maybe you guys are fortunate enough to have extra money at the moment. Everyone's situation is different, but maybe you still have the funds to put towards cards and you are buying the cards that you want for your own collection at record low prices. I'm sure you guys, if that is what you are doing, you are super happy. But as I said, if you are like me, you're trying to do best of both worlds, it is very tough. As I said, guys, please let me know. Let me know what you guys think on this topic. If you enjoyed this video, do hit that like button to let me know that you enjoyed this type of video. I'm not here always trying to do pricing videos. Obviously, I've mentioned this many times before, I'm always trying to come up with new, fun, exciting topics for you guys. This one was fun for me to make, even though it was more on the negative side. But as I said, I wanna end it on a positive note. Just wanna reaffirm to you guys, if you're in it for the long haul, I do believe this is the best time ever to be in the UFC car community because you have the opportunity, if you have the money, if you have the funds, you can be grabbing some cards that are gonna be the lowest they will ever be. That's just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. As always, I appreciate you guys watching each and every week, and I will see you again here next week at UFC Card Talk. It's the ceremonial first pitch.